Let's meditate for a bit. Close your eyes and watch the breath. And anything else that comes up, you don't have to get involved. The Buddha's first instructions to his son when he taught him meditation was to try to make your mind like earth. People can throw disgusting things in the earth, and the earth doesn't respond, doesn't react. Make your mind like wind. Wind blows disgusting things around, but the wind itself isn't disgusted by them. Make your mind like water. Water washes away disgusting things, but it's not disgusted by the water, by the disgusting things. And the same with fire. Fire can burn up all kinds of things, but it doesn't really pick and choose burning only nice things. It burns trash, but it doesn't get disgusted. What this means is when things come up in the mind that you don't like, either things that other people have done or things that you've done, things you see in yourself that you don't like, you have to have a certain amount of patience and resilience. Don't get pushed off your seat. Just accept the fact that's the way people's minds are. And whether you like them, the things that you see or not, that doesn't matter. You're going to learn how to deal with them. It's not you're going to have to just sit here with them all the time. But part of learning to deal with them means that you can not get upset. Just see, well, this is something that's got to be done, and take a matter-of-fact attitude toward it. And that cuts through a lot of the problems right there. Because one of our big problems, of course, is ignorance. And some of the ignorance is just things that we don't know, and other ignorance is things that we hide from ourselves. And you can hide these things only so, so long. And then they come sticking out again. And so instead of just pouring more delusion on them, pouring more ignorance on them, you decide, okay, I'm going to turn and look at them. And remember, you've got the breath here as your friend. The breath is coming in, the breath is going out. It's not disgusted by anything. Now, of course, the rhythm of the breath gets changed sometimes when greed, aversion, or anger jealousy, other things come into the mind. And when that happens, you try to stop and say, okay, let's get back to a normal breathing again. That way you've retaken the breath. You've made it yours. Otherwise, the, the greed gets the breath, or the anger gets the breath, breath, or the lust gets the breath. What you want is your mindfulness and alertness to have the breath. So that's why we work on making the breath comfortable throughout the body. That way we, we have something good to hold on to. Whether you're here at the monastery or wherever you go, you've got your friend right here. Don't let the breath go over to the other side. And the thing is, it's not picky or choosing. When an emotion comes in, the breath will respond. Okay, You can also bring awareness in, and the breath will respond to that. It may take a little while. And sometimes the hormones may be running in your system. You have to drink a lot of water and just be patient with them as the physical signs calm down. But you realize the breath just keeps coming in, going out, going in, going out. And you want that kind of patience in your mind. The mind watches in and out and the comings and the goings or whatever. And doesn't have to get upset. It's not that you don't see that these things are things that should be removed from the mind, but you realize, okay, it's going to take some time. And in the meantime, okay, you can live in the same mind with them. Like gunslingers who decide, okay, we can live in the same town. They're there. You're here. You don't have to identify with them. And maybe you can't chase them out yet, but at least you know, okay, you've got your space. You've got your section of the town. And that'll get you through a lot.